Hello. Are you guys here to figure out how to make a phosphonium illid, or what the heck a phosphonium illid is in the first place? Well, if you are, then you're at the right place. If you're not, then um, I guess keep watching until you figure out what you're looking for. Um, yeah, anyway, the phosphonium illid, right? These are three types of phosphonium illids. Let's see. So a phosphonium illid, right? It's essentially just a molecule with a positive charge and a negative charge, and they're on adjacent atoms. So for a phosphonium illid, the positive charge is on the phosphorus, and a negative charge is on a carbon that's directly bound to the phosphorus. Now, what's different for each phosphonium illid is the R groups that are attached to the carbons. Sometimes you can have two hydrogens, sometimes you can have one carbon chain and one hydrogen, or two carbon chains attached, OK? So I'll show you guys how you can make each specific type of illid. So this way you can make specific types of alkenes eventually in the Wittig reaction, OK? All right, so first things first, I want you guys to take a couple seconds and I'll pause my video in like a bit and just think about, think back to lecture and think back to your notes. Don't look at them though. And just think about how do you make a illid and see what you can remember, OK? All right, so hit pause in a couple seconds and come back, all right? So yeah, hit pause. OK, so did you guys remember this part over here with um, triphenylphosphine and alkyl halides? So the first step to making phosphonium illids, right, is to actually connect the um, three phenyl groups that are connected with the phosphorus to your carbon chain. And you do this via a triphenylphosphine molecule and a alkyl halide. And they undergo a SN2 reaction so that you can connect the two parts together. All right. Now, something important to know is that this reaction can only occur with uh, zero degree or super primary alkyl halides, which is this one over here, one degree or primary alkyl halides, this one, or second degree alkyl halides, which is this one. Uh, tertiary alkyl halides will not work because if you think back to way earlier, earlier in organic chemistry 2 or organic chemistry 1, um, SN2 reactions do not work with tertiary alkyl halides because your nucleophile can't access the carbon if it's all blocked up by big carbon groups, carbon chains, OK? All right, so yeah, so alkyl halide is just a carbon chain with a halogen on it. The halogen can be fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Doesn't really matter. I just use bromine here because I like it. And let's see. So I'll draw out the mechanism for you. Your triphenylphosphine is just three phenyl groups with a phosphorus that has a lone pair. The lone pair is going to go do a SN2 attack at either, at whichever alkyl halide you use. And when it does it, right, it's gonna, the carbon's going to be overloaded with too many bonds. It has four bonds. It's getting a fifth one, so it gives up the bond with the leaving group, bromine. And it leaves, OK? So then we'll get another intermediate product. And our, um, th our phosphorus is going to be connected with the carbon chains. All right. And then as you can see, it's this step right here. Um, where you can determine what kind of a phosphonium illid you'll make. If you use a super primary one, you'll end up with this, um, uh, uh, this phosphonium illid. If you use a primary one, a pr primary alkyl hal halide that looks like this with this carbon chain on it, then you'll produce this, time, this type of a phosphonium illid at the end. All right? So next, I want you guys to hit pause one more time. What I want you to do this time is to give me the products from here. And also, guess what other reagent do we need in the second step to actually produce a phosphonium illid? OK? All right, so hit pause in three, two, one. Hopefully, you guys paused. Otherwise, um, this is a little awkward. So yeah, how was your day? And ta-da, this is the product that we get from our previous SN2 reaction. As you can see, the carbon chains are stuck on. And our molecules that we get are they look very similar to our phosphonium illids, right? They're so close. And if you guys said base, and then you are correct, what we need to do now is do a deprotonation, meaning removing a proton or hydrogen with a base. So this way, we can actually create a phosphonium illid. Because remember, think back to my original definition. A illid is just the molecule with two charges, a positive and a negative, and they're on adjacent atoms. But there's no, um, there's no negative charge yet. And I forgot to draw the positive charge, too. <laughs> but Phosphorus, let's see, phosphorus was neutral before, right? It lost electrons when it formed the bond with carbon, right? So that's why phosphorus is positive now. 
But carbon needs a negative charge so that it could become an illid. So the bases that you can use can, these are, these are just two examples. You can use other bases as well. Um, my example was NaH, sodium hydride. Sodium, uh, you, you want to know that, you need to know that sodium, sodium hydride, it's basically, they have, a, they have a ionic bond between them, meaning the bond is very, very like, weak in, in water. When it goes into water, it snaps apart. And the sodium is just the counter ion for the hydride ion. So the bond snaps apart, so the hydride ion can basically go and grab a hydrogen. Or you can use um, butyl lithium. It's just a four carbon chain, so butyl. Lithium is just, is just, once again, a counter ion, just like sodium. It's just sitting off on the side. You actually have almost like a Grignard reagent over here. That's very, very basic. So either one of these can do the job. I'll show the lithium one doing it down here. The carbon chain just flies around, targets a hydrogen, and then the two electrons in the bond go to the carbon, and then negative charge. Doo -doo. All right, here the hydride can do it. Goes over here, pulls off the hydrogen, freeing up the two electrons in the bond, so you get the negative charge. And then you can do the same thing up here. Bam, 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 bam. We have our phosphonium illids at last, okay? Yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Um, just to do a real quick recap, in order to get phosphonium illids, you need to do an SN2 reaction first with either a super primary, primary, or secondary alkyl halide to produce whatever type of phosphonium, phosphonium illid you want at the end. And then to make it an illid, you have to do a depronation, and then we're done. OK? So yeah, depronation with a base, of course. But yeah, so this is my video about how to make phosphonium illids. I hope you guys liked it. If you liked it, make sure you like it down there. I really hope YouTube doesn't move that button, otherwise this won't make too much sense in the future. But anyway, um, yeah. So I would really appreciate if you guys can leave a comment down below if there was anything if, if there, there was anything specific that you guys liked and would like me to include in future videos. Okay? Like I don't know if um, there's certain teaching techniques or certain certain tips I give you that you guys like and like to see and would like to see more often in other videos. Then just tell me down below. Okay? All right, so I have a slide coming up, but you won't see my face, so I'll see ya. Oh yeah, and also, um, if you wanna see my other Vidig reaction videos, just look down below in my um, description box, okay? See ya.